right, let's get let's get let's get started. So um Zorin OS had replaced their default web browser from Firefox to Brave. And I personally think this is a pretty good change. I mean, obviously, I use Brave on my computer. I've got Firefox installed, but, like, I mostly... I, I try to use Chromium where possible because I actually care about my security. You know, not that I think I'm being exploited or anything, but if there is an exploit, I don't want to be part of it, you know? So, people oftentimes say, though, they're like, okay, well, I want to try Brave, but... Or, I, I want to use a different browser because of the Firefox policy changes. But I don't want to use... I don't want to use Brave. I don't like crypto. I don't I don't like the CEO of Brave, whatever you want to... Whatever you want to say. And Zorin OS switched to it because it is still free and open source software. So, you can fork it. You can do whatever you want to it, pretty much, like, within reason. Because they are using the Mozilla license, so you do have to be considerate of branding, which is what happened to Braver. Braver, the fork. Was it got shut down, uh, and it was just like a more privacy-focused Brave, you know, Brave fork. So, what's cool about Brave, though, is if you'll notice on this privacy test page, let me see if I can zoom in on that for you. So... This is pretty much ranked like top to bottom in terms of security, basically. So Brave is at the Brave is at the forefront. It's got like almost all the tech boxes right, except when you get down to some of this privacy stuff. And they try to be reasonably private, but they're not like all the way. You know what I mean? Like because if you go into stuff like LibreWolf uh, and Mulvad. They do actually have all these privacy check boxes, but they start losing in security tests, which is the problem. And uh, what's wrong with that is Firefox is missing some like core security features. I can't remember what all of them are, but I know the big one is tab isolation. And without tab isolation, basically, if you opened up a second tab here, uh, actually, I should freaking, I should. Yeah, there we go. I always forget I could do that. And without tab, tab isolation, basically, if you opened up a second tab and you typed in your password, if privacytest.org had malware in it, it would be able to read what happened in your second tab and it could get secrets from that. So that's why that's why you need that. Sorry. But, um... But, uh... uh so... Privacy related though, you don't want to have LibreWolf if you don't want Mulbad because the anti fingerprinting will break a lot of functionality. So it doesn't really make sense to ship a hardened browser unless like you're actually into running super hardened software, but you'd have yeah, sorry, you definitely don't want it as by default for like most people. You do definitely want to give them Chromium though, and the reason for that is Ideally, your default browser should be the most compatible thing you can provide, uh, as long as it is still free and open source software. So you would want you would want a browser that is more secure, more private, better engine, and Firefox really doesn't meet any of these criteria. It has a significantly worse engine, it has worse performance, it has less compatibility with web standards, and you can make the argument that because Google controls the web standards, that means that, of course, Chromium is going to have the best compatibility, but that's not my problem as an end user, you know? The end user doesn't care about whether or not they're protesting Google controlling web standards. Like, they may not control them for much longer because of this whole DOJ thing, so, you know, it'll be a moot point in, like, the next few months. So long as somebody else takes over Chromium and then they will control web standards because believe it or not, as as much as I hate monopolies and stuff, we are comparing two free and open source projects. We are comparing Chromium and Gecko basically, and maybe Servo if that ever comes out, which sounds like a cool idea. So if you are, if you have to choose between two free and open source projects, you want to choose the one that's significantly better. And people will say, oh, but it has Google's backing, so you don't want to be relying on it because they will control what goes upstream. Yeah, but you also have that same problem with Mozilla. 
Like, uh, unless you're working for Mozilla, you're probably not in, like, Firefox development. You know, it's still very much corporate run. And it doesn't really, it doesn't make sense, again, as an end user. You don't really, you don't care as long as your shit works and it's free. You know, as long as it respects your freedom. And Chromium itself doesn't have a problem with respecting your freedom. It's when you add Google services to it that it does. But the other thing people forget is, yeah, I want all these privacy features, but when you have security policy, security policy does rely a bit on like telemetry because you do need to have things like automatic updates because if you don't update, you're, you're susceptible to vulnerabilities. You should always keep your browser updated because it's software that interacts with the rest of the world and that's where malware spreads. So you always wanna make sure that your browser's up to date. You also wanna make sure you have Brave uses Google security policy and because of that, it does send requests to Google services, but those services are giving you better protection. So it's, again, a moot point. You know, yeah, yeah, you can consider that spyware that it has to send some information to Google and retrieve some information from Google. But Google security policy, especially for Android, is actually very nice. And even for Chromium, you definitely want, if you have to prefer something, it's always best to have a reasonable amount of both security and privacy. But you're, you should be weighted towards security because privacy isn't going to save you, uh, you know, from attacks. So it makes more sense realistically to go for a more secure browser. And so because of that, you know, it's, I've always been kind of annoyed, and a lot of people have mentioned this, that they don't let you choose your browser usually when you install Linux distro. My friend's working on one called Accretion OS. Uh, it's not nearly in a ready state yet, but one thing they do, though, is they have a little selection that lets you choose what browser you're going to install. And I think that's a good solution. I mean, like, you don't want to have too, too much choice, but your web browser is like something that there's a lot of variety. And if you pick the wrong one, like you're going to have to install another one, you know? So it's cool that Zoran OS is by default giving you something. It would be great if they had the choice, you know, because a lot of people will like morally disalign with, um, with Brandon Ike Ike or whatever, and some people may morally disline with Firefox because of the way it treats your data now. So ideally there would be selection you could choose, but you know, if we have to have a default, I would say pick a Chromium browser, because I've noticed a few distros, I can't remember which ones, but they would actually ship a Chromium browser as default rather than Firefox. and. It's good because, like, I mean, again, they're like, oh, well, I don't like Brave because it has bad monetization. And what Zorin's doing is, actually, Brandon is kind of pissed about this because Zorin has stripped out the ad services from Brave, or at least disabled them through Chromium's, like, policy editor. And so Brandon I calls that a free, free writer problem, and I'm like, yeah, but you are making free software. So if people are allergic to having sponsored shit in their browser by default, I mean, that's, not, that's again, not their problem. If they want to re-enable it and earn some basic attention token, that's a, that's a different story. But for the most part, I think you're just going to have to deal with it. That's, that's what you get for making free software. Uh, and by the way, I've already made a video on this, but if you are, again, allergic to... I don't know you know, to crypto in your browser or sponsored images or whatever. It's not really any worse than what Firefox does where, or Vivaldi does or whatever, where they put in like sponsored links or whatever to the homepage. You can disable all that. You can disable Pocket. But like, I'm always like, why is a free browser giving me advertisements by default? That's kind of weird, you know? So... Brave does the same thing, and the one thing I like about Brave, though, is because of their crypto shenanigans, they're able to completely avoid Google monetization, which is something Vivaldi and Firefox and Safari cannot do. 
by having that default search engine, they are paid a significant amount of money. And soon that money is about to go away. So Brave will actually not be affected unless Chromium ends up in the hands of somebody that fucks around with it, you know? And that's kind of where we're at. You know, there really needs to be a third engine because Mozilla has shown time and time again that they're not capable of keeping up with web standards or you know making the making good choices as a company so maybe ladybird is really going to depend they're going to need corporate backing basically they're going to need a significantly larger team maybe that'll be what we have to go with maybe you know but that's kind of the thing is i don't really see them as competing at all on this list you know i don't see them being able to uh, I don't see them being able to get all of the security they need, all of the privacy features you need, plus all the add-on support. Uh, Firefox is like the close second, you know, close enough second to Chromium. And that's really the only option you got. So I personally think Brave is kind of a win for Zorin OS. I think it's a better browser. Say what you want about the CEO, but it's free software. <laughs> you know, you don't have to... You can give them a middle finger and say, like, I'm going to use your software anyways. Uh, you know, this is kind of how it goes. But, you know, uh, it's one of those things that m may have to change in the future. And especially come around August and the end of the year when financials start coming out. We'll see kind of where we're at, you know. And that'll be interesting. All right, see ya.